Bismillah. So thank you for joining me again in this lecture. Um, this time we will be um, we will go for skin uh, uh, cancer radiotherapy, let's say techniques. And honestly speaking, there is no exam without skin cancer patients. So it's very important to have a very good background. This is number one. And number two, I will try as much as you can to simplify things. But we will have also to highlight few kind of uh, sentences that you have to to use it in your answer because sometimes the examiner is looking for it so he's searching for the, a particular word or a particular effect or a particular phenomena as we will describe it later on but also you can use it in a daily practice so i hope that you can use this skill or technique not only for the exam purpose but it's also on a daily practice if you you if you listen to this lecture and then you go downstairs in the mold room and take a skin cancer patient and try to treat him i think it would be the most important part of it because you apply what you hear on a, a real case uh, patient then you will never forget what you are learning here most of the cases coming in the exam will be cases for a radical treatment where he's asking about your or the question is usually about your skill using electron beam or using superficial x-ray machines or whatever type of treatment like a vmat or whatever how, whatever kind of, of treatment you are using for for your patients but please try to to answer with the modality you are using so if you are not using like the superficial x-ray machines like back home in egypt we remove the machine nowadays so it's, it's only electron beam then use the electron beam and i will try to answer in both directions so that we know exactly with what kind of answer we have to use and what what type of questions they will ask you for 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 for, for, for the exam and how would you answer it for uk based practice because most of the centers will have a superficial and deep x-ray machine for example our machine i think in the department has been there for years now and they are looking for an upgrade so the superficial or deep x-ray machine is used till now simply because you are getting rid of a lot of huge a huge number of patients you stay will stay away from your linear accelerator and you leave your linear accelerator for the other sophisticated vmat techniques but i will tell you and i will show you now that you still for skin can some of the skin cancer patients you still can use vmat and we have to look at it in a very careful way this patient is a very classic exam question lesion within the inner cancer it can be a very simple lesion like this one or a simple or another lesion like this one and if he will be on the, on, in, on the exam like a, it can come as a viva but it can also also come as a clinical face-to-face -face patient if he will you will uh, you will see the patient he will ask you examine the patient face or examine the patient's skin or examine this lesion and then you have to describe usually they will put the patient very close to the window or they will put a lamp there so please make sure that you are using the lamp also they will give you a ruler that will usually be beside the patient so use the ruler and they will also put for you a magnifier so please use it as if even if you don't use it during the daily practice please use it during the exam he wants to make sure that you did it before okay this is very very important if it's viva he will tell you describe this lesion and as any ulcer or any lesion in the face this is there is a crust there is itch this so it's size size uh, site and you need to examine the patient we take full history and take clinical examination the clinical examination here the most important part you want to make sure that it is not fixed lesion so the lesion is still mobile and it's not fixed to the underlying structure it will tell you what is the differential diagnosis don't forget the usual kind of things it is benign malignant and it's also very uh, sensible or or you can say this is likely from the history from what you're saying this is likely to be uh, a bcc basal cell carcinoma of the 
inner cathesis. When you examine the patient, whether in the exam or or in in like in the viva, we ask you so which area, what, what do you want to examine? So I want to see the size, I want to see the edge, I use a magnifier, I want to examine the fixation of the skin and I want to examine the lymph nodes. So then the, come the question, will the BCC go to the lymph node? You would say first, this can be a basis squamous, I don't know. So it can be like there is an underlying uh, pathology, usually take a piece of tissue and it may be a basis squamous. Some, some patient may have a basis squamous pathology. The second most important part, why you have to examine the, the, the lymph node, because usually skin cancer patients, they, they, they have other uh, other skin malignancies like squame somewhere that was removed somewhere else in his face and now he's presented with lymph nodes. So it's not from this lesion, but it is beyond this lesion as a scope of way of thinking. Don't forget also to ask about the immune system, like if he's immunocompromised or not, taking immunosuppressant. This is very common exam question, he's HIV, he's a, a renal transplant patient or a mycenia gravis patient taking immunotherapy and, and so, so on. Then he will ask you, so how would you treat this lesion? Then don't forget, you're not working alone, you're working in what we call the skin MDT clinic alongside with with your surgeon. So I will discuss the case in the skin MDT first, and then I will ask him to come in our skin MDT clinic with the surgeon and dermatologist. I really enjoy this clinic, by the way, because you learn a lot from the dermatologist and you learn a lot from the surgeons and you, it's a very, very nice and integrated approach when you see the patient together and you discuss it. So it can be surgery and it can be also radiotherapy. He will tell you, yes, we decided, or the patient decided he doesn't want surgery because of the morbidity, or he, because he's an old age, frail patient, and he is he wants to, to go for your side and radiotherapy. And usually the question is for that, to test your ability of doing this with radiotherapy. So, we have first to consent the patient of the radiotherapy side effects and blah, 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 redness, soreness, blah, 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 don't worry about it. But please don't forget what I call it watering of the eye. There is two reasons there will be watering here. Yes, exactly. One is the lacrimal duct obstruction, and this is, can happen after a long period of time, and the patient may need dilatation. There is another a reason for the watering of the eye, which will be what we call it ectropion. So if fibrotic changes happen here, the uh, edge of the lower limb may fall down and the ectropion can happen. And this also can, can uh, 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 watering can happen as a side effect. I don't know why in some of the exam answer you hear the candidate saying uh, dry eye syndrome. Why, why a patient with this lesion will have dry eye syndrome? It is not dry eye, please, it is watering. Dry eye will happen if the patient has a lesion under the outer lateral part of the eye. Then this is another story where you are irradiating the lacrimal gland. So the lacrimal gland is far away from here, please. So this will be watering, not dry eye. This is very, very important. So then you consented the patient and the patient is happy to go ahead with treatment. Then you take him to the mold room. In the mold room, I will re-examine the patient again. You will use your light, you will use your magnifier, and you will use, um, you will use your uh, 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 pen to start to delineate the tumor. Honestly speaking, some, some of the lesions like this one I used to ask the dermatologist to draw it for me. So he, they have what we call a dermatoscope and dermatoscope, they can easily delineate any lesion for you. And especially if the edges is not very clear here, the edges are very clear and it's easy to do it. But if the, 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 lesion, the lesion is not very clear, you can ask the dermatologist to delineate it for you. Mm -hmm. So in clinic, while we are together, I ask them to delineate it for me. And then I take a snapshot on the patient mobile or with his permission and put it on the system and then you know exactly where is the lesion even if the edges are not very clear for you the dermatologist can help and they are really really very helpful in that so you will go to the mold room in the mold room you have to delineate your target 
Um, for those who are interested in target volume draination, I will prepare for you another uh, lecture where we are talking about the perineural invasion for skin cancer patient and how to to delineate it. So and also the use of uh, photon in terms of the the um, like uh, drainage lymphatics and so on. I think this would be a very important part. So you delineate it, and I usually do that. So I usually draw like a red color uh, for the GTV carefully. Yeah, take your time and palpate and try to be uh, generous. If it, the edges is not clear for you or something wrong, do whatever you want to do. And then you take another half centimeter margin around the, the your GTV, and this will be and CTV and that's it. There's no PTV here, so it's just a tumor with a margin. If this is an SCC, you have to take a one centimeter margin around. So after drawing this, then the, the, uh, the, uh, the radiographer or the team in the mold room will ask you, will, will take the measurements then, and they will do what we call a lead cut out to draw it along the patient. Usually this question when it comes for the exam, it will come to how would you protect the, the eye? This is the most important part. So please go to the mold room and see what kind of uh, lead shield do you have to protect uh, what we call it internal eye shield. How would you use it? You have the tungsten type internal, internal eye shields and you have also the gold type, you have the silver type, whatever whatever you're using, but be careful, please. We have what we call it the lens shape ones. Okay, these are what we call it the lens shape ones. This will go inside the, in between the eyelids. But for the spade shaped ones, you will, you cannot protect to, for the spade shaped ones, if the lesion is on the lower eyelid, then this can protect the upper eyelid. So it will go uh, from inside, and then it protects the eye and the upper eyelid. If the lesion in the upper eyelid, then it will go in the lower eyelid, but it cannot protect. It will protect the lower eyelid and the eye if it will go underneath the, the shield. So it's different. The other one, which is the lens shape, it can be inside and, and uh, inside and that's it. It's so to protect the eye anywhere. Practical points, first, you will ask the patient or you will tell the patient that I will put what we call it local topical anesthetic. And I saw very strange things. The, some of the, of the, of the, of the like, uh, like um, the, the, the geographers or colleagues, they, they try to, to put uh, the eye drop from far away and ask the patient not to blink. The patient will blink. There is no way. Please drag the lower, I'm sorry, it appears to be a very stupid kind of thing, but it's very practical, and very simple. Just drag the lower lid down and put your, your, your uh, drops inside the lower eyelid conjunctiva. That's all what you have to do. Don't ask the patient not to blink and whatever. He will blink eventually, but at least you'll make sure that the drop is inside the lower conjunctive. And then you wait for 10, 15 minutes and get a piece of cotton and try to touch, don't touch the cornea, just try to touch the cornea. The patient will not blink and then you will know that the effect is there and then you try to put your eye shield. As I said, there is two types of eye shield. It is what we call the commercially available tungsten eye shield. We have in our department uh, uh, like uh, a homemade one. I know that the CE you now uh, insists that everything should be uh, commercially related to a company who has a CE approval and blah, blah, blah. So it depends on your, your department. So please check which type of eye shield you have in your department. This is the tungsten high density material eye shield and it's covered by acrylic. And it's a very common question of the exam why there is a thin film of low density material over the eye shield or over the shield in general. Simply because what we call it of the back scattering. If the x-ray interact with a high density material, there will be uh, 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 backscattering electron beam to be uh, scattered under uh, under the the eye. So we need to remove this backscattering, very thin low density material, and this backscattering effect will be 
uh, uh, the eye, the inner side of the eye will be protected. So it's very important and very common question. Why do you want to put a thin layer of low density material over the eye? protector or the internal eye shield or whatever so if the gold one the gold is a low density material the silver the silver is a low density material some center they use uh, a wax but it has to be very thin so it's very important to be thin and smooth which is sometimes difficult some center they use aluminiumly covered so it's very important to understand or to know which type of eye shield you have down in your department so that you can use it and if you don't have one you can still buy buy one so for the superficial x-ray machines or for the deep x-ray machines you still you just have few millimeter of lead and this is very very nice of the superficial x-ray machine that the protection is easy it's easy to protect the eye with with any kind of uh, lead shield whether it's an x-ray shield or what we call it this one they call it by the way the electron uh, eye shield commercial available it can tolerate up to 9 mev billion electron volt and cannot go beyond that but usually with superficial skin lesion in this area you need 6 mev but you have to be aware which type do you have and how much can this eye shield tolerate so because if you didn't use the proper shield you will end up by harming your patient so it's very very important to understand how to use it and what to put it you have to tell your patient as well that after removing the eye shield i will put topical antibiotic usually we have small ampoules of chloramphenicol we put it inside and you can ask the patient also to uh, put uh, 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 eye patch so you will tell the patient that after the radiotherapy uh, session you will we will have to close your eye with an eye patch till the sensation of the eye comes back or come back to you that's why the patient may not be able to or it's it's preferable not to drive so it will, will use one eye driving it's not a good thing to do so you can arrange his transportation or you can tell him please arrange for somebody to pick you after the session otherwise we will have to keep you for one of two hours till the complete sensation or the normal sensation of the cornea comes back so what happens if you didn't close his eye with a patch it's easily uh, his eye can be harmed and he will not feel it unless the uh, the cornea can be irritated can be uh, anything can harm his eye without because he lost his normal uh, uh, reflex so again we added we asked the patient to come down in the room i marked my 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 volume and usually you mark it after inserting the internal eye shield because sometimes it causes a bulge here in the lower eye shield and the measurement will differ a bit so it's better to put the eye shield first and then you mark your skin and take the you mark your tumor and take take a marsh after doing that the radiographer will do the lead cut out for you to protect the normal tissue around it and if you are using what we call it a uh, lead um, a rubber lead type of thing usually it's easy and it's easy to to use it i would like to make your attention about something there is a region in the face called the edge zone you remember the old days where the faces are during the embryological life we have what we call the fusion lines and if you google it what is the edge zone of the face it's usually around the eye around the ear and around the nose these are a fusion lines where the lesion can be deeper than what you see so it's better to use an energy that is sufficient to cover the tumor at depth you need at least half a centimeter at depth or more if you think that the lesion is more aggressive than you would expect so it's very important in your judgment so do the lead cut out you take the measurement of the cut out you do also have to give them the size of the applicator so the size of the applicator is usually fixed so it's four times four five times ten times ten whatever just see what kind of applicators you have and then they will use the lead cut out to shape this uh, volume of your patient you put in turn eye shield and then you you treat the patient on the machine and tell them and tell the examiner that i will go with the patient on the machine to see what we call the 
we call it the standoff. I will talk to you about it very, very soon. But this is a very important part. So I want to go with the patient on the machine to see the first session. And I would like to to make sure that the standoff is is not uh, more than uh, half a centimeter or one centimeter and we can measure it as well there. One of my colleagues was answering this question and I, he was saying I will use external eye shield. So I said that's fine use it into external eye shield but if the lesion is close to the eyelids I, think, I don't think you can do that because um, because you need the eyelid to be part of your your uh, volume, so it will be very difficult to to do that without harming the uh, conjunctiva and and uh, and the eye. So I think this question and the exam usually it comes to you know, or to uh, like to examine your. Uh, or your capabilities or your knowledge about how to use the internal eye shields and how to uh, uh, to treat your patient with skin cancer with superficial x-ray the energy is usually 120 and 150 for those back home please you can say 120 with 8 millimeter ammonium filter we know that the x-ray machine needs filters to harden the x-ray and remove the characteristic radiation and harden the beam. So for the low energy, you can use aluminium filter. For the higher energy, 150 and above, you can use a copper filter. And there may be sometimes, as an MD question, they will ask you about the soleus filters and the arrangement of the soleus filter is very important. So please uh, revise it quickly. If you remember the TCA, uh, uh, Take a, take a arrangement T is for, for titanium and C for copper and A for aluminium and this arrangement is very crucial the aluminium should face the patient and the titanium with high density material should face up to the machine usually it's not in the FRCR exam I think it's a part one physics but I think for the uh, MD back home I think it's very important to be aware of this so please look at it carefully and quickly okay the last thing about it uh, so this is a question define the GTV describe your technique I think it's the exam question is coming to describe your technique so be be very be, be very cautious uh, and and uh, it is important the standoff the standoff is is how the cone is applied on the machine this is a very famous uh, photo from the uh, the bible the red, red red book as you can see when you go with the patient on the machine you will see that the applicator may have a distance between there is there may be some distance between the applicator and the tumor surface or there may be less like a tip of nose for example where the tip of the nose will be closer to the uh, the, uh, the to the source of the the machine this is what we call it the the stand off is it 0.5 or less than 0.5 honestly in practice we we don't correct less than one centimeter so the the effect because the effect as i can see here the effect will be around 12 percent variation with a difference of one centimeter this is usually they are looking for so the words the examiner is looking for is looking for the back scatter this is very important part whether it's electron or it's an x-ray and usually they look for the standoff just to tell them that you are aware of it even if you don't calculate it by the way we don't calculate it usually ask the physics to give me like a bit of a hint do we have to correct or we don't nice trick i learned from my radiographer is that with when the applicator for example for lesions in the tip of the nose when they put the applicator in the tip of the nose the tip the applicator is empty so that it will the tip of the nose will go inside but it will stop at the edges of the nose here so what they do is they put a film uh, you know this very thin film of uh, your you wrap your sandwich with this uh, foil it's not foil it's um, transparent plastic kind of thing that you wrap your sandwich or you wrap uh, something and it's a very very thin film of, of plastic uh, bag they, they put it in on the applicator side so when they 
put the applicator on the tip of the nose they push the applicator and the, the film down so it flattened the tip of the the surface of the tip of the nose and it usually reduce this uh, effect and i really i really like it to, to make things simple so if you put a film here on the applicator the film will push the the nose down and it will flatten the nose the tip of the nose down and then you don't have to worry about what we call it the, the standoff so for the superficial x-ray machines please don't forget internal eye shield don't forget the the uh, the uh, stenosis of the duct ectropion of the eye loss of eyelashes clearly and use of the internal eye shield how would you put this internal eye shield because it's a very practical point we said that we will be practical today how would you put the internal eye shield inside so after putting your uh, local topical anesthetic i saw a lot of people that try to put the lens in the lower eyelid first please don't do that it's very difficult to do that pull the upper eyelid first so ask your colleague or you can do it yourself pull the upper eyelid first and then push your your uh, uh, eye, the uh, internal eye sheet underneath the lower eyelid. Ask your patient to look down. They, this will be easy for you, will make things easy for you to push the internal eye sheet uh, underneath the upper eyelid. When it is under the upper eyelid and make sure that half of the internal eye sheet is under the upper eyelid, then drag the lower eyelid down. You'll see that your internal eye sheet is going inside inside the eye and that's it if any difficulties to push up or to drag down and when you drag it down still there is a big large part of the internal eye sheet that is not inside this means that you need a smaller one and that's why you have three sizes you have small medium and and large i usually prefer the medium size so if you would like to use something try the medium unless you see your the patient eyes is very very small uh, I then use a small that's fine but so long your eyes covered properly and everything is in place you don't have to 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 worry this uh, uh, this I think cover most of the exam questions and there will be two points to remain so I said about the backscatter be prepared about the backscatter I said about the side effects and we talked about it there is something very important called the F factor. I'm sorry to, to mention that, but I know that it's not for the FRCR exam, but it is for the first part of the FRCR exam. And it's also related to what we call it the cartilage damage after radiotherapy. So there is a lot of controversy about the use of ortho voltage machine in tumor involving the cartilage or the bone. The reason is because of what we call it the F factor. The F factor is what we call it the Rontikin to Rad conversion factor. Please go back and review this because it is that it is the F factor is very important for energies below 300, but for higher than that, it's not of that value. That's why when it comes for like bone infiltration for the cartilage or like spongy bone for the hands the you will say you will in the exam question uh, we would prefer to use electron or photon beams okay for the exam purpose but in practicability you will see a lot of consultants still using the the superficial x-ray machines i cannot say it's wrong honestly but all what you have to do is that you need to use a proper fractionation for, for the cartilage. Just try to increase the, the fractionation you are using. So you like instead of using one week or two weeks, make it four weeks. Sometimes it's difficult for the patient to come four weeks and usually short courses are very important. I would recommend for the fractionation that you review or just take, it's either your local protocol or use the ones in in the uh, red red book in most of our patients we use the 40 or 45 in 10 we are using 55 in 20 and we are using uh, uh, 32 in 5 i personally sometimes i use the 32 in 5 over two weeks 
although it may be sort of like a, an old lady with uh, a BCC that is symptomatic and they don't want her to come a uh, lot to the department every day. So I fractionated 32 over five, but over two weeks, which will make it every other day. So it's more convenient for the patient. I don't usually use the single 18, but it's written in the book, you can do that. I don't usually use the 14 gray, um, uh, 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 14 gray single and repeated after a month. I mean, there is a lot of fractionation. Don't worry about it. Just use the ones that you are using in your department, or please go to the for the FR exam. You can use the ones in the uh, red red book, which is fine, and you don't have to worry about it. I think as so long you are using it properly. Just for uh, like. Um, for, for me, if there is a cartilage invasion or there is a bone invasion, go uh, uh, stay away from the superficial x-ray machine because you don't want to go in the exam for any debate. You just want to be very simple and you you go for the, uh, uh, the easiest part of what the, the others are doing. If you want to prepare yourself for a factor, this would be great, great advantage and I would like I personally, when I, I examine, I think if you are, if you remember the F factor, I think this is uh, an asset, like a, a bonus in your exam, like uh, extra, extra marks. Because, I mean, we, we all know about the F factor in the first part, but we just forget it when it goes, when we go to the second part. So the F factor for the bone and is, is very important. The F factor for the cartilage is very close to one and that's why those who argue that there is no harm of using the superficial x-ray machine for cartilage or pin and tumors, they say the cartilage is one. So why do you bother or, uh, or worried about more dose in the, the pin or, or, or radionecrosis there? So this is the argument for them, uh, for the F factor. For each department, you will have uh, 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 tables for the energy. So when you choose your energy, there is nothing wrong with the exam of saying, I will refer, instead of saying, uh, like for example, you can, you can say, it's, I will use 120, I will use 150, but you can also say, I will refer back to my, my tables and I will see the, the depth those uh, uh, table and I will choose to my energy accordingly. So this is also a very safe and very nice answer that you are aware that in each department you have uh, percentage dips those uh, uh, tables and that you have each energy available in your department will be available for you. So also for the electron beam, by the way, there is a table that you can see and look at it and use the bolus. So this is a very kind of escaping from remembering uh, uh, the dip percentage dips those of each, each uh, 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 energy. For, I usually keep something very simple, like uh, say 100% on the surface, at one centimeter it's 90, it's 80 to uh, or 89 for the 100. It's uh, keep keep something simple if you don't want to refer. But in the exam, it will be very I highly appreciated to say yes. I'm I will refer to the tables and I will look at it and I will choose my energy accordingly. I need at least half centimeter half a centimeter margin at depth, and I will cover my lesion properly to. Uh, 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 get get rid of it. Very similar case. This one, surgery or radiotherapy. If radiotherapy, measure it, thickness, take depth, and 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 go to the table and and use it properly. If there is extension, so extensive lesion in the exam, please don't forget that you may need to image this, this lesion. You need a scan to see how much of depth is the bone is infiltrated and here electron or photon would be better, okay? So for the exam answer, don't use superficial x-ray if the bone of the hand will be will be irradiated. Although I said, as I said, I'm not saying that you cannot. I'm saying that if for the exam answer, you have to be you have to be a bit careful, okay? 
very common exam question which will be the uh, the lower lower lip and in the lower lip you have to put what we call the intra oral oral sheet uh, that's 35 minutes now um, maybe you can split this lecture into two if you don't mind and then maybe with the uh, the same patient with the eye i will answer the same uh, lesion but by using using electron i hope this will be useful for you you find it practical and uh, yeah all the best don't forget to pray for me and uh, dr al-haddad thank you